So this Warriors season has been, uh, what are we going to say, not ideal so far? I mean, we all knew that there were questions about the depth, but this is a good lord, man. So, 1-3, and three, they've had several blowout losses. They've had a couple that they were down like 30 or 40 at points to teams that are not that good. And now Steph Curry has a broken hand. Now, broken hands, uh, from a little bit of Googling, can be hit or miss, I guess. Maybe you only miss a few weeks. It could stretch out all the way to two months. If Steph misses two months, then the season's a wash, no doubt about it. If he doesn't, and if he is maybe out for just a couple of weeks, then maybe it would be possible to salvage this. But at the same time, I mean... What does salvage mean? Does it mean be respectable and make the playoffs? Because assuming that the hole that they have dug for themselves, they're going to keep on digging with Steph gone for some amount of time now. At a certain point, it just becomes unrealistic to make a push for the playoffs in the West. And that's with them figuring things out. And as of right now, it does not look like they could actually figure things out. I mean... You could make an argument that the only dude has who has played legit well is like Eric Pascal, who's a rookie. He's shooting really well, he plays hard, and there you go. Everyone else has been a disappointment, including Steph. I mean, Steph is currently shooting 24% from three, and D'Lo's been rough with the percentages, and Draymond has not been able to one-man show it on defense, which, to be nice... Might have been just too much to ask for of him at nearly 30 years old, but you'd think they wouldn't be 30th in defense. You would think that between Steph and Draymond and Steve Kerr, they could carry over a lot of those same defensive principles that they had a year ago, right? And you'd think, okay, they're not going to be the best defensive team in the league when they want to be, because they hadn't been that for a few years. But when they really wanted to, they could turn it up, right? But you'd think that they could get to 15th just off of communication and playing hard and maybe one or two guys surprise you a little bit on defense. On top of Draymond being Draymond or the best version of himself at this age, it has not happened. So I don't know how you flip the switch there. And now you can expect the offense to just fall apart without Steph, right? Um... So this is, uh, I I don't know where this season is going to go in terms of wins and losses. I predicted them for the seventh seed, and at this point, it does not look like they're going to make the playoffs. Now, it's not impossible, and we'll have to see how it all plays out, but they would need to flip the switch kind of immediately, given that they're uh, in the Western Conference. So then we start to have different conversations about this team, the idea of tanking or whatever they would consider tanking i mean joe lacob said that they don't believe in tanking even though they did that for harrison barnes one year but whatever so then it becomes a matter of okay at what point do we want to stop trying to put the best product out there in our new arena and do we want to just lose as many games as possible get a high draft pick as high as they can i mean it's top 20 protected we assume they get it if they bottom out But with the randomness of the lottery now, you could be projected for the third pick and you end up with the ninth pick. You could also end up with the first pick. So it's it's just, it's pretty random stuff. But the idea of next season, Steph, Clay, Draymond, D'Lo, high draft pick. Maybe this Pascal kid is good. Maybe one other guy here between Jordan Poole and Spellman and Damian Lee and Willie Cauley-Stein. One of these guys ends up being something for you. And then maybe you can get like one or two other dudes just from random NBA things. Then you might be right back in title contention. But do we know if they really want to go that route? I mean, to be fair... Even if they don't want to tank, they may effectively be tanking anyway, especially if Steph is going to miss a prolonged amount of time. I mean, I think it's safe to say they've been trying to win their first four games and that hasn't worked out really at all. So, there's a chance they end up being pretty bad anyway. But maybe it's the difference between them winning, I don't know. Like, a late season surge is not impossible, okay? Maybe they win 
36 games on the year, right? Out of maybe Steph is amazing the last 40 games or something. Would that really be good for them in the long term? I mean, you you could make a case that it would not be, certainly. I don't know where to go from here. I feel like we could just talk about some of these random players they have a little bit. I mean, I think there was some hope that Jordan Poole could be a shooter. He's attempted five and a half threes a game. It has not gone in. I mentioned Pascal. He plays hard. He, I like him. Spellman just needs to lose weight. I mean, I know if you search hard, hard enough on the internet, you can find some NBA nerd positivity about Spellman. He's just too damn heavy, okay? I know he lost weight coming into the league. It's been two years, and he still needs to lose more weight, so until that happens, I have no real opinion on him. I think Alec Burks is basically a lost cause at being a decent NBA player. It's just been too long. Marquise Chris may be beloved by Mark Jackson because he dunked once, but I don't think he's, like, good defensively. If he has a clue, I'd love to see it. Damian Lee has been making threes very early on. That's about all I have. I mean, he's 6'6", and he's gotten some minutes in the NBA, which could mean something, could mean nothing at all. Kavon Looney, we think, is good. He's definitely put in good minutes for them over time. Willie Cauley-Stein, I mean, I've said what I need to say about him. Good athlete. Is he a good basketball player? Eh, we don't really know. And then we have Kai Bowman, and if you have an opinion on him, then I salute you, because I certainly don't. And I might have missed Jacob Evans in there. Um, He was their 28th pick in 2018, like 6'6 dude who you hope could make shots. And I mean, he actually has shot okay from three so far, so maybe he's a guy, you know? We We don't know. If we can be very positive, then perhaps he could be a rotation dude for them in a year from now, you know? So, okay, let's say it's a perfect world, all right? Perfect world is... Starting five next season is Steph, D'Lo, Clay, Draymond, Looney, or Stein, or random center, because the Warriors love to grab centers. And then the bench is Pascal, who proves to just be kind of in the Draymond school of weird player who makes an impact. And then either Jacob Evans or Jordan Poole is all right. And then their draft pick is good. That's an eight-man rotation. They're probably right back in business. But as far as this season is concerned, it just it might be one of those years for Warriors fans. I mean, I guess on the flip side, if they, if they have a surge, which I think is mainly just going to come off of Steph being amazing, I mean, maybe D'Lo channels what he did a year ago, but I feel like D'Lo... To do that, he would have to just get constant pick and rolls, and the Warriors don't want to do that. I mean, even this year, Steph is running, like, slightly more pick and rolls than he did a year ago. Like, it's just not something they do. So, um, yeah. So if that's not going to happen and they are going to really bottom out and get into the lottery, then hopefully they just nail that pick, and then I think they could be right back uh, to where they, uh, where they have been the past few seasons. So... Yeah, this season is, it might just keep on keeping on. So yeah, 